Hello and welcome to the Bearded Math Man's YouTube channel. Hey, in this video, I am going to introduce to you interval notation. Here's our goal, right? We want to be able to read, write, understand interval, interval notation. That includes knowing the difference between what a square bracket means in interval notation and what parentheses mean in interval notation. We also are going to have to talk about the difference between well, this one gets a little tricky. Sometimes in interval notation, things look like an ordered pair. So we got to teach you the difference between what an ordered pair is and how interval notation sometimes looks just like an ordered pair. And then we have to understand the difference or the connection between this thing called a union and a compound inequality. So let's do uh, let's do by example here, shall we? Let's get to a few things and kind of work our way through, tie in what we know to the new stuff. So you guys are familiar with these kinds of inequalities right here. This one is zero is less than or equal to x, which is less than three. So let's just explore this a little bit and then we'll introduce how interval notation works. And should be good to go. All right, so first of all, can x equal two for this graph or this inequality? Well, x equals two is on the graph and uh, zero is less than or equal to two, that's true, and two is less than three, so absolutely it can. Now what about the endpoints, like zero, can x equal zero? Well, yeah, because zero has a solid dot and zero, well, it's equal to itself, so it's less than or equal to itself, and it's also less than three. Good to go. What about the other endpoint, three, can x equal three? I guess not. The reason it can't is because three is not less than three. You see, zero works because zero is less than or equal to zero. So what we have here, this symbol is a non-strict inequality, which means that the value that's associated with it is included, right? While this is called a strict inequality, less than, greater than, both of those are strict, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, those are non-strict. And so strict inequalities, the value that's associated, is not included, right? So in interval notation, this is what interval notation would look like for this inequality and for this graph. Do you see we have a square bracket for the zero because that's a non-strict inequality. So zero is included and everything between zero and three is included, but three itself is not included. The zero is included because of the square bracket. The three with the parentheses is not included. So an interval is just, it's like a space of values, like a range of values. So the range of values shown on the graph is anything greater than or equal to zero, but less than three, greater than or equal to zero, less than three, greater than or equal to zero, less than three. All three of these things mean the same thing. So why don't you go ahead and try this? Try writing this as in this, this graph right here as an inequality, just to make sure you got it. You probably do. You already know that, right? So here, two and four have solid dots. That means they're both included, which means we have these absolute, these inequality symbols right here. So less than or equal to, right? So try now to write this in interval notation. All right, now let's go over it, shall we? This is a non-strict inequality, which means that the value is included, right? So just to make sure we're rock solid right here, if you have a solid dot, that's the same that's the same meaning, the same concept as the inequality symbol less than or equal to or greater than or equal to means. And in that situation, we're going to use square brackets. Whereas on a graph, if it was an open circle or in, in an inequality, if it was less than or equal to, or sorry, less than or greater than, right? If it was less than or greater than, we would use for interval notation, we use parentheses, and that's because the value is not included. So if you said the interval notation for this hotness right here was from two to four with square brackets, you'd be good to go. Now, sometimes interval notation and ordered pairs get confusing, like in these two situations right here. You see, as an interval, this is from negative one to two, and because they have open circles, that means that the values of negative one and two are not included. So it would be parentheses negative one and parentheses two. Well, that's the same thing as that ordered pair. <coughs> so here's the deal. 
When you have both of the boundaries for the interval not included, the notation looks exactly like an ordered pair. So here is the left boundary, it's not included. Here's the right boundary, it's not included. And that's how interval notation works. It goes smallest to largest from left to right. So for example, this left boundary, five, is included. Five to infinity, well the right boundary would be infinity. Infinity is not really a number, so we can't include it. Well, if we compare this interval notation to a coordinate, a coordinate, the first number is the input, it's the x value, and the second number is the output, the y value. It doesn't really matter which one's larger. This is always the input, this is always the output. Whereas for inter interval notation, the smaller number always goes on the left, the larger number always goes on the right, and it's just how it works. Now, just to make sure that we're clear, infinity isn't a number, it's a concept. And so if if the boundary on the right is going to be infinity, like that means it's going to go on forever. And so we can't include it. So we use a, 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 a parentheses instead of a bracket. So always with infinity, use parentheses. All right, let's do a little practice, right? Let's play the match game. Let's say we have these four things right here, these four inequalities. And what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to match these up with their the appropriate interval notation. So here are our choices, right? One, two, three, four choices right there. So learning is not a passive activity. So why don't you go ahead and pause the video, take a guess. How do you feel like, how do you think these are going to line up? Just go ahead and try it right now. Go ahead and pause the video, try it. And then when you're done, play the video, see how you did. See if you got it right. Ready? No, really, do it. I'll wait. Go ahead. Okay, now, <laughs> so let's see. Did you say that with the square brackets, because this is a non-strict inequality, less than or equal to, and this is less than or equal to, those are going to have square brackets, so negative 1 and 4 are included in this inequality. They are also included in this interval notation. There we go. Whereas this one, do you see, these are strict inequalities. That means negative one and four are not included and parentheses mean not included. So that one goes here. Now, this means negative one is included. This means four is included. This means negative one's not included. This means four is not included. So here, negative one's included, four is not. And here, negative one is not included, but the four is. How'd you do? Let me know. Leave me a comment down below. Tell me how you did on this one. Let's see another example. One that's maybe, I don't know, a little bit trickier, right? So what if you had a graph like this and you're asked to find the domain of this function and to write that domain in interval notation? Why don't you try it? Go ahead, once again, pause the video, write down your answer, see how you do. Really, go ahead. Okay, so I got a couple, I got a couple possible answers here for us. We've got square bracket and parentheses, so negative two to two. And how about negative one to four, both not included. Negative one to four, both included. Negative one included two, four, four not included. Ah, did you get any one of those four? Hmm, which one's right? Go ahead, think about it for a second. Which one of those is right? So it turns out, <clears throat> So it turns out that negative one comma four is included because, let's make sure we got this clear, right? Domain, it's the set of all possible inputs. Those are the X values. So we're only looking left to right. We're looking which values can you plug in for X. So the smallest value is negative one, right? And it is included because it's got a solid dot. That's why we used a square bracket for the negative one. And it's smaller than the, it's the smallest possible input. So it goes on the left. Now, the open circle means that that value is not included. That's four comma two. So the input here is four. So we're gonna use the parentheses. So that's why it was from negative one to four. How'd you do? I hope you did well. If you're confused, leave me, uh, leave a question in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to help you out. Now, let's try another example right here. Here, we see that we have a compound inequality, and on the left, this says x is less than 5, and it's less than because it's an open circle, whereas on the right, we have x is greater than or equal to 9. This is a compound or inequality. We can write each of these, hopefully we're proficient with writing each of these, 
in interval notation. So here on the left, we have negative infinity with a parenthesis to five not included. And on the right, we have nine included to infinity. Infinity is never included, right? Well, this or word in interval notation, we're going to use this union symbol. This union symbol says it's all of these or all of these. And so the gap is in the middle. And so that, that, that union symbol is what we'd use for this kind of a situation. Let's see another example. In fact, why don't you try this one? See if you can write this graph in interval notation. And you're going to have to use the union symbol because there's a gap. Go ahead and try. No, no, really. Go ahead and give it a shot. Pause it. No, really. Just come on now. All right. So did you get from negative infinity to two, both not included, and then you union with, so or, three included to infinity. Yeah? So this, this capital U looking thing shows that there's a gap. And that's what we use to show that gap when we're using interval notation. Okay? Now, I've got some practice for you right here. I would like you to write each of the following. I would like you to write interval notation for each of these following graphs. And give it a shot. So go ahead and pause the video. And then when you're done, when you're done, you can check the description down below to see how you did, to check your answers, okay? Now, if you are still learning about interval notation and, you know, you'd like to have some more information, you can visit my website, thebeardedmathman.com. There's tons of other stuff on there as well, but here on my channel or on my website, you've got all kinds of notes about interval notation it's all laid out there for you. It's good reference. You're going to find this video, some others, a list of practice problems, and a quiz. So with that quiz, you can get immediate feedback and some help for each question if you got it wrong and you're a little confused. So that can be a really powerful uh, tool at your disposal to help you learn. Here's some practice problems for you. Hey, if this has been helpful, I'd appreciate it if you give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. Let me know how it's going. Hope you guys are all safe, and I hope to see you guys soon. Have a great day.